So back in high school, um, because it was, it was a performing arts high school, there must have, you weren't the only gay person in that high school, I would imagine. No, uh, no, no. no. no that way. would be like the movie Fame, where Aubrey's the only gay guy <laughs> in the New York School for the Performing Arts. Like, come on, come are you on, kidding wait, me? But, yeah, come on, people. No, there were, there were other gay people in the school. There was certainly, there was a, 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 a very tall, willowy um, mm -hmm. native guy with very wedgy hair who was in uh, my social studies class and mm. named Wilson. And he was out, and he was gay, and he didn't care who knew it, and I really mm -hmm. admired him. We got along really well. Mm -hmm. And there was a little muscly, um, dark-haired kind of Hispanic guy named Tim who was also gay and out in, mm -hmm. in high school at that time, which was a very dangerous thing to do. And, and I admired both of them a great deal because at that age, I certainly... Mm -hmm. I didn't even know if I was gay or I was bi. I still right. had a girlfriend. I like girls, but I like guys. So it was all kind of, mm, I don't know what's going on here, you know? And so after Banff, uh, what happened then? Uh, well, I finished the program and I mm -hmm. won, I think, every award in the city that a high school mm -hmm. kid can win right. for drama and that kind of thing that year. And then the next year, I... Um, I wrote a play called With Love From Your Son that won the adult category of the uh, Alberta Playwriting Competition. Mm -hmm. And I got sent to Banff again, but only for a week this time, <laughs> uh, thankfully. And we did an actual workshop of the script. The script was far enough along that, um, that we could actually workshop it. And it was a, um, a story about a, a guy whose father is very sick who ends up selling his dick for money in order to get money to pay for medicine for his mm -hmm. father. Mm -hmm. Uh, which already, you know, then I'm, I'm going to myself, well, I, if I write this, are people going to think I'm gay? Like, oh, geez, I don't know if I can tell this story. And then I thought, well, I can't not tell this story. And, you know, you always have that thing. A writer always had that thing where they go, what are my parents going to say? Mm -hmm. And I do have to say that I was very lucky that way because I never cared. Yeah. I never cared what my parents thought were going to think about it. I just cared about what I was going to do about it. They hadn't shown me enough interest for me to actually care about their feelings about it either. So mm -hmm. that was a great freedom. And that also... Uh, led to me working at Walterdale Theater, which was a community theater, one of the oldest community theaters in Canada, very well established. Okay. And after high school, I did a couple shows there the first year, and then the second year, I did five shows there, and I was acting or stage managing or designing or all three in some cases. And then the year after that, um, and, and I had won the playwriting competition, uh, the artistic director at Walterdale came up to me and she said, will you do a play for us next season? And I said, yeah, of course, I'd love to do a play for you next season. There's no money involved or anything, but if I wrote a play, I could direct it, and we would do it there. So I spent the next year writing away, you know, between all the other things one does when they're 19 or 20 years old, and um, wrote this play called Mutants, which had, was ripped from the headlines. I read a story about a group of uh, kids who escaped from a correctional institute because of the sexual harassment that's been going on and abuse that's been going on at the hands of the guards. So I used that as my jumping off point for this play about these group of young people who escape from a mm -hmm. blah, 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 and take the head of it hostage and hole up in the top floor of an old building and make demands to talk to the press and stuff. And it was this very kind of meta-theatrical, I mean, I had um, assisted directed Les Belles Sur and I had acted in Zastrozzi at that point. Mm -hmm. I'd done a, a lot of stuff, so I, I was taking all those influences and putting them into this one play mm -hmm. with all my friends in it and um, someone like, uh, two weeks before audition, someone from the theater said, oh, you know, we should probably read the play. And I'd been sending them drafts and saying, yeah, I wish you would read the play. Mm -hmm. And I got a phone call from the artistic director, and she said, you know, uh, they've read the play, and they really don't like it, and they don't want us to do it. And I said, what are you talking about? I've given people this play 50 times for someone to read it and get back to me. Is it okay? Can I do this kind of stuff? You can't tell me now that you're going to cancel the show. And she said, yeah, they, they are going to cancel the show. And I said, when is this going on? She said, well, there's a board meeting like tomorrow, hmm. and I said, well, tell them I'm going to be there. And I came to the board meeting, and I made them tell me why they wanted to cancel the play. And it was all, there's a gay character in the play. Mm -hmm. There was also foul language in the play. Mm -hmm. There was also, I don't think we had any sex on stage. It was a little bit early for that, but there was certainly a lot of sexual content in, in the characters and in their lives. And that was what they objected to. And I actually had to sit there while they voted on whether or not to do the play, mm -hmm. right there, and I basically said to them, if you don't do the play, I'm gonna sue you. And um, a wonderful mm -hmm. woman we'd been working with who was, who was a former artistic director also stood up and she said, you know, we can't censor this boy. This boy has worked with us for the last three years. 
he's put so much time into this, we asked him to do it, and now you're going to tell him he can't do it because you're offended by it? Isn't that what we're here for? Mm -hmm. And they voted, and it was like, I won by two votes. The wow. play would go ahead. Mm -hmm. We did the play, and it ended up being their biggest selling show of that entire season, and brought in a whole new audience that had never gone to Walterdale, because it had this whole punk rock kind of uh, uh, feel to it, this influence, you know, because for me it was like, in the theater, I want to bring the, the life that comes in clubs and the things I hang out with and the mm -hmm. music that I'm listening to, I want to bring that in and see how it goes. And of course, it sold to, you know, sort of the 18 to 25 year olds like crazy. And the theater mm -hmm. was like, where are these people coming from? We've never seen this stuff before. Mm -hmm. And Paul Thompson saw that show. And he had just finished being um, the artistic director at Pass Marai, and he had Maggie and Pierre under his belt, and the farm show, and I Love You Baby Blue, which was a, a, a show that was a legend to me. I'd only <coughs> read about it, of course, nothing like that would play in, in Edmonton, but a show about sex where people took their clothes off and faked blowjobs. And the end of that show was a guy hanging his dick through a flat, his flaccid penis, while a girl did a magic act, and his penis got hard, and then she hung a hat on it and the light iris down and went out and that was the end of the show. <laughs> and so people say to me, you know, where do you get permission to do the things and to write the things you write? I mean, one of the first shows I ever saw was Equus at the Citadel Theatre in, yeah. in Edmonton, which was, again, was another production that just blew my mind that was full of sex and nudity and these giant horses and all this, this stuff that really spoke to me. So, you know, when people start to say, well, where you, who told you you could do all this stuff? It was like, everyone told me I could do all this stuff. All the stuff I like does all this stuff. Why wouldn't I? Mm -hmm. So I met with Paul, and he was, you know, he thought I had a lot of promise. And he said, uh, uh, what are you working on? And I said, oh, I'm working on this new show about a kid who thinks he's a werewolf and is in a mental home. And he said, oh, that sounds great. How far are you? And I hadn't actually written a word. I said, oh, you know, I've got the first act. It's three acts. And he said, well, send it to me, because I think I know someone who will do it. And I went, okay, and ran home and wrote like a son of a bitch for the next four weeks and got the first act out and sent it off to him. And he took it to Andy Tan at 25th Street Theater in Saskatoon, which existed at that time and only did new work. And Andy said, oh, we love the first act, and I got a, a contract. I mean, I was 21, you know, I got this contract um, telegrammed to me, because that's how you did things in those days. It was like actually a telegram <laughs> that they printed up for me. And I signed it and uh, went back to writing it and wrote the second act and then we were casting it so I had to fly to Toronto which is my first trip to Toronto and I met Lane Coleman who was going to direct it and they put me at the um, lovely Waldorf Astoria that used to be up on Charles Street uh, mm -hmm. just uh, east of church. Wow. And uh, a cockroach fell on me while I was sleeping in my bed. It was the first time from Alberta, we don't have cockroaches, we don't have rats, what's going on here? Exactly. <laughs> but I got used to that that very quickly, and we cast the show, and I, and I kept writing it. I never did find a third act for it. I mean, we, did it, we opened it in Saskatoon, and it got mm, a, an interesting reaction. Again, it was my first show. I mean, I was 20, but no one has ever said in any of these reviews, like, this kid is young, and this is about promising, and let's see what he does. I was judged just like I was, had been doing this since I, you know, for the last 40 years or whatever, probably mm -hmm. the same way I am now. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was really an eye-opening experience for me. And it re I really went you know, okay, the play got rushed, mm. I'll keep working on it, but the sad thing is, you know, when Wolf Boy was done, it was done in Edmonton, and then it was done in Vancouver with John Moffat, uh, where it was a big hit, and uh, then we did it in Toronto in 1984. I'd been living here for uh, three years, because Paula brought me in after Wolf Boy to do a collective with him mm -hmm. about street kids in Toronto, mm. and to do that, he hired all of these white kids from North York who just got out of the acting program. Right, of course, yeah, yeah. And it was like, Oh, but this is Are there any street kids? Have, have these people ever met street kids? Have these people ever... So I ended up sort of taking them out and getting them high and, you know, introducing them to sort of some of the darker aspects mm -hmm. of Toronto and all of that. And that had done quite well, because in the end, Paul, you know, I, I just said, I can't do this anymore. If I have to listen to one more lame-ass improv about smoking a fucking joint <laughs> when nothing is going on, I'm going to have a nervous breakdown. And they're all just waiting for me to write the play for them based mm. on what they're doing. And what they're doing is stupid. And I'm not mm. going to write something based on stupidity. So mm. I'm, I'm out. And Paul said, no, no, you're the most interesting thing. You stay. What do you want? And I said, well, I want you to fire almost everyone here. Mm. And I want to direct it. Right. And he said, okay, you have three weeks. Right. And that's what we did. 